through the middle, leaves the 310. He's quickly up on the approach. He's going to cross lane. He's got a tough shot, but he makes it. Marcus from Aberdeen. Aberdeen, Maryland, midway between Wilmington, Delaware, and Baltimore. The championship here, 59 and 60 for the last two years, been the lowest scoring championship here on our 16-week tour. The player is barely averaging 200. Now we'll see what Bowers is doing on the championship here. He's standing here, going to slide in this area, try to start between the first and second arrows. A lot of loft. Chris, we've been sitting side by side, going on 18 years. That never. is the wildest shot I have ever seen. I've Sorry. seen some in the channel, but that's the wildest. A stray. <laughs> oh my goodness. He barely catches the four pin going away. He leaves the one, two, three, five, ten. What do you do? Throw it hard as you can possibly throw it. And holler, whatever. Six pin lead now by Ringener. Here's how he converted it. We don't have this in our beta maxes of how to make spares and overhead shots, but we never thought it'd be left, but Mark is taking us on an adventure. Now, Phil Ringener has to be buoyed by the wildness of Bowers. He can extend his lead to 14 with a strike in the sixth. And he does. When lanes are tough, we know they're tough. The players knew they were tough going in. The first match was tough. When you do that, you need a more of a ball under control. Of the four, five players in the championship round, only Ringer is what we call a down and in player, keeping the ball in play. If he gets nice and relaxed and really gets zeroed on this pair, he can be very tough just filling the frames. Right now, he can extend to a 24-pin lead, seventh frame. Mary Sullins is in the wings along with Bob Vespi, standing in the way of the winner of this match. Philip Ringener in the lead by 24. We'll be back. PBA, Johnny Petraglia, one of the three Triple Crown winners. And um, he's going to go home for a bit and come back and bowl the last 12 on the winter tour. Mark Bowers completely lost, and the right-hand lane is the key. There's a little hang spot out there. If he goes around it, it he hangs out there. Look at the no break on the ball. If he goes a little bit straighter towards the pocket, he crosses over to the left. Completely lost, has the washout again, has to drive the head into the 10. So for Mark, it'll be the wrong kind of experience, but he'll remember it down the way. Well, he's had one other championship round of experience, and that was uh, two years ago in the fall tour, and he bowled a 170. So one of the hardest things it is for a young player on the Pro Bowlers Tour is get used to that championship round. I've said it before, you got to be a long-distance runner all week long, and on Saturday you got to be a sprinter, and you better learn how to do them both to be a winner. And it's here amazing how difficult it is to get in the final five because, as Bo mentioned earlier, it's a 56-game format. That's grueling. You're right, Chris. And more than 240 top players. There's a very confident look on Ringer. He's asking for a re-rack on the right hand. No, there's a pin laying down on the lane on the left hand lane. Now, for the people at home, if you ever have Deadwood laying on the lane and you touch it with the ball, you get zero for that shot. So wisely, Mark Bowers is waiting for the pin to be removed. On the Pro Bowlers Tour, you get zero for the whole frame. A little more of a penalty out here. OK, what's your tip of the week? Tip of the week this week, Chris, is on speed control and has been very, very important today on the championship pair. If a player throws a little too hard, the ball slides by. If he throws a little too soft, as we saw Bowers do a couple of frames earlier, it hooks too much. As you see the human element come into bowling. No more pin boys back there, but it was necessary to remove that pin. Now an easy spare, eighth frame. Okay. Bo will be giving you the top 24 finishers a little later on. I can give you some beyond that. Del Ballard. And uh, Billy Young tied for 33rd. Uh, Ron Williams, 36. Tom Kreitz, 37th. Pete McCordick, 45th. Bob Benoit, the bridegroom, 48th. Mark Roth, 50th. So with a three-bagger, Bill was trying to make it four in a row. 
Historically, the player in the last few years who's ever been able to go straight down the boards, not hook the ball very much, has been the winner on this championship here. I remember Amleto Monicelli struggling through, mm -hmm. struggling through two years ago, and then throwing a straight ball the last game and winning the championship. Ringer's doing the right thing. David Ozio, the defending champion here, uh, finished 10th. Another Texan from Vider, Texas. Phil is from Big Spring. No S. In the offseason, Philip, uh, who was a former high school baseball player, coaches the Little League teams. Says he enjoys it. And he's got a new baby on the way in another five months. So it behooves him to win a tournament and get things going. Beautiful. And there's Jill. Young lady we've uh, known for a long time. And Watching with all of us today, Bobby Dinkins, staff of the PBA, and his boss, Kevin Shippey. Johnny Campos is our tournament director. He's down there seated along with Frank Esposito, who, along with me, shares the luxury of having been with this series 30 years, going in 31. Mark Bowers, as he comes up in the 10th frame, can shoot a 189 if he strikes three times. 3-6-10. No good. That's a shutout. Automatic winner for Phil Ringener in the second match as he's never been headed today. Chris Warren with a 160 game. If Mark Bowers bowls a spare here in the 10th, he'll be in the 160s. Who can give a little competition to Ringener? Will it be the three-time champion, Harry Solids, in the next match? So it's going to be a ringer, an opportunity to go into his third match. The tip of the week with Nelson Burton Jr., how the ball speed can affect your accuracy and 